I just told you I didn't want to do no interviews. And you said you are going to do interviews. <laughs> now you told me to do interviews. Now you're trying to take me away from them. No. <laughs> let me show. Let me show. Let me show Dante's boxing nation some love. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So these are the first photos of Errol Spence after his surgery. I mean, we just heard about the news the other day, and as soon as we heard the news, he gets surgery. As reported yesterday, they said that he had to get surgery immediately. And that's exactly what happened. Guys, the injury that Errol Spence suffered, it's a serious one. It's a partial detached retina in his right eye. Hopefully, he'll be able to recover and recover soon. Hopefully, this is not something that's going to take a year or two years for his vision to completely clear up. Sugar Ray Leonard, he had this exact injury, and he retired at a young age. But the good news is he did come out of retirement to resume his career. Heavyweight Ernie Shavers had the same injury, and he came right back to fighting. So it's very possible that Errol Spence, he can return to the ring within the next six months. But this would just be terrible for Errol Spence if he misses out on this Manny Pacquiao fight. This is a fight that Errol Spence has been chasing for what, the last two or three years? This was the fight that was going to make him the undisputed biggest star in the sport of boxing. If he were to beat Manny Pacquiao, a Manny Pacquiao who we just seen completely dominate a young Keith Thurman, and a young Adrian Broner. We already know that Manny Pacquiao has done a great job preserving his career because he only fights once or twice a year, and he doesn't really take a whole lot of damage. He doesn't get hit the way old school fighters used to get hit. And it's also the way Manny Pacquiao trains. He's dedicated to training. He's not some type of person that just goes out and gets overweight, drinks and does drugs and all that kind of stuff. He takes his boxing career serious. He takes his boxing career almost as serious as Floyd Mayweather did. Hard work, dedication. Now, there was no guarantee that Errol Spence was going to beat a Manny Pacquiao. I still see that as a 50-50 fight. But if he did beat Manny Pacquiao once again, it would have finally put Errol Spence in the position that he always wanted to be in the biggest name in the sport of boxing. It would have been equivalent to Floyd Mayweather fighting Oscar De La Hoya. That was the fight that made him the biggest draw in the sport of boxing. So hopefully after a couple of weeks, we find out that Errol Spence's vision is completely clear and he doesn't need another surgery. Because if he needs another surgery, that's really bad news for Errol Spence. But now, even if Errol Spence, he recovers completely, Right, and he's ready to fight in the next three or four months, he still has a couple things to worry about. Number one, he has to worry if your Dennis Ugas will beat Manny Pacquiao because that's not going to be an easy fight for Manny Pacquiao. A complete different type of style that Manny Pacquiao is even used to. The Cuban fighter could easily pull off an upset. But let's say Manny Pacquiao, he takes care of business, he gets Ugas out of there, then Errol Spence is still racing against the clock because once again with this being towards the end of Manny Pacquiao's career we never know when he's going to say you know this is my last fight we never know when he's going to have a bad performance he could have a bad performance in the Ugas fight while winning and still say I think it's time for me to hang him up you know once again depending on how his performance looks and then once again we have to see if the doctor is going to tell Errol Spence or recommend him to at least take a year off of boxing. That would be really bad news for Errol Spence. Because there's no telling what's going to happen to Manny Pacquiao within that time. I mean, we already know that Manny Pacquiao is planning on running for president in this country. So there's a lot of things that could change within a year's time. We'll see. Now, as you guys seen in the images that I showed you before of Errol's eye, You'll notice it's the exact same eye that he damaged the most in the car accident. 
So it could be possible that that's where this injury started and it ended up worsening in sparring over time or even in the Danny Garcia fight. And once again, maybe Errol Spence got caught with a good punch in sparring and he's seen something. You know, his eyesight was blurry. There was spots in his eye vision, his field of vision, because this is what Sugar Ray Leonard said. His eye vision was blurry for two weeks before he finally got it checked out. So this is a serious injury, and there's no guarantee that he will ever be able to return back to the ring. There's no guarantee, guys. Now, let me respond to some of these racists that often love to comment in my comment section. You know, with the racists, what they love to do is they try to use our talking points. You know, like when we're reporting the news on someone like Tyson Fury pulling out of a fight. Ryan Garcia pulling out of a fight, Tio Fimo pulling out of a fight, and the list goes on and on and on. So what these decafs want to do is they want to use our exact same talking points and try to imply that a black fighter is doing the same thing that the other fighters we just mentioned did, right? But they always fail miserably trying to do this because it's never apples and apples. You can't sit over here and tell us that Errol Spence is doing the same thing that Tyson Fury did and how come you black bastards are not treating him the same way you treated Tyson Fury. Let's completely revisit the Tyson Fury situation and compare it to this situation. Number one, by Tyson Fury, his family, and his whole team's own admission, they never even wanted the Deontay Wilder fight. They told us that they didn't want the fight. They admitted they were only taking the fight because the judge forced them to take the fight, right? We know that when it comes to Errol Spence, Errol has been chasing this Manny Pacquiao fight for years and years and years because this was the fight that was going to catapult his career, right? And furthermore, when it comes to Tyson Fury, he pulled out of a fight because he claimed he had COVID. We found out that was a lie. Because we've seen him out at bars, at casinos, and everywhere else three, four days after he claimed he had COVID by way of contrast. We hear the reports that Errol Spence has pulled out of the fight because he has a partial detached retina, has to get surgery immediately, and that's exactly what happens. The following day, he gets surgery. When it comes to Tyson Fury... Not even his team members, or some of them, they didn't even believe his story with COVID. If you guys didn't see the video I did where I reported what Mike Hunter said, go watch it. Even Mike Hunter said it sound fishy. He said one day he came to training camp, and then we hear that someone in the camp got COVID, and then the very next day, they say Tyson Fury's got COVID, and the fight is off. Mike Hunter, his own words, he said, it sound fishy. I've read articles from old media, writers that often defend Tyson Fury. They didn't even believe the Tyson Fury story on COVID. And I don't even have to really elaborate and go into detail when it comes to Ryan Garcia pulling out because he had an anxiety attack, right? And then after a good two weeks, he says, all right, guys, I'm all better now. Time to look for a new opponent. After he pulled out of three fights, he was supposed to be fighting Javante Tank Davis. Then he told people, hey guys, I'm not fighting Tank, I'm fighting Manny Pacquiao. Then all of a sudden, he was ordered to fight Fortuna. And this is when he had an anxiety attack. You guys can't have it both ways. One minute, you want to try to take credit away from Errol Spence by already giving Manny Pacquiao an excuse if he loses by saying, oh, he was too old, et cetera, et cetera. But then when all of a sudden, Errol Spence pulls out of the fight due to an eye injury and he gets surgery, now you want to say, oh, yeah, see, he's ducking. How come you guys aren't treating him the way you treated Tyson Fury, right? You can't have it both ways. And when you fans say in my comment section, oh, well, if Manny Pacquiao would have pulled out, you guys would have said this and you guys would have said that, let me just say this. The only time a lot of people didn't believe 
a person's injury is if that person got caught lying about his injury. Once again, like Tyson Fury, he got caught lying about the COVID situation. On top of that, we knew by Tyson's own admission, he never wanted to fight Deontay Water in the first place. Speaking of lying, it's funny because when it comes to Manny Pacquiao, let's not forget Manny Pacquiao lied about a shoulder injury that he suffered in the Floyd Mayweather fight. After Manny Pacquiao lost to Floyd Mayweather, he claimed that his shoulder was injured before the fight. When fans threatened to sue Manny Pacquiao because they spent money on that fight, because you have fans that bet on that fight, assuming that he was 100%, etc., etc., et cetera, that's when Manny Pacquiao changed the story. And then he said he injured his shoulder in like the third or the fourth round. But go back and watch the fight, guys. What you'll notice is Manny Pacquiao, he continues to use his right hand the same way he's always used his right hand in all of his previous fights. There's no grimacing. There's no taking a round off to not use the right hand. He's using it the entire night. Never does he tell Freddie Roach, something is wrong with my right arm, et cetera, et cetera. Never do you hear Freddie Roach say, hey, is anything wrong with you? Because I notice you're not using your right hand. He, none of this was said. Not only did I box before as an amateur and injured my shoulder as an amateur, but I injured my shoulder on multiple occasions when I wasn't boxing. And I could tell you it doesn't matter if it's a major shoulder injury or if it's a smaller shoulder injury. There is absolutely no way you're going to be able to throw punches the exact same way you threw it when your arm or shoulder was 100%. I mean, forget throwing a punch. It's hard to even lift your shoulder. Perfect example, John Pascal. He injured his shoulder, and you knew he was injured before anyone even told you because he couldn't even lift his shoulder. He fought the remaining fight with only one hand. When Floyd Mayweather, when he injured himself uh, against Carlos Hernandez, for the whole fight, Floyd Mayweather fought with one hand. That's how you fight when you have a shoulder injury. I mean, I can keep making examples, but let's move on. So after the fight, Bob Arum, he keeps telling us the complete opposite of what Manny Pacquiao is telling us about the shoulder injury. And then all of a sudden, Manny Pacquiao, he goes scuba diving, he's swimming. When he's supposed to have a major shoulder injury. When reporters ask him, what is he doing scuba diving? When he was supposed to have this shoulder injury, you know what Manny Pacquiao said? He said, oh, the salt water healed my shoulder. So it, he said God's salt water healed his shoulder. I'm not making this up. That's why I have the image on the screen. This is what Manny Pacquiao said. And guys, Manny Pacquiao claimed he had a rotator cuff injury. Do you know how serious that injury is? You can't even lift your shoulder when you have a rotator cuff injury. I mean, I had a muscle tear and could barely move my shoulder. A rotator cuff injury is way worse than that. So when you're trying to compare apples and apples, man, that's apples and rocks. It ain't nowhere near the same. The only way you will be able to equate the two is if Errol Spence lied about the surgery, if Errol Spence never wanted the Manny Pacquiao fight. Now, if Errol Spence, if he claimed he had COVID and we seen him hanging out at the bar the next day, then you would have a reason to say, hey, how come you guys are not saying anything about Errol? He's doing the same thing that Tyson did. And this is the reason why I can't wait to start doing my live show again. The thing that I miss the most, I'm not going to lie, the thing I miss the most is getting these racist decals on the phone. Because it was hard for us to get them on the phone, but when we got them, boy, it was a treat. They loved to fill up my comment section, but it was hard to get them to call in because they knew I was about to hit their ass with facts. And they wouldn't be able to hide anymore. We're going to get this live show started soon because I want to cook some of these damn decals. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.
All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com, like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man, Scalp Carolinas, on Instagram. Contact them at 704-499-3471 and make sure you follow them on Instagram.